You know what time of the show it is. Time to keep up with the Joneses. Courtesy of 105.3, the fan Jerry Jones. Could Tony Romo play in a game down the stretch? I want to do what gives us the best chance to uh, have Tony contribute to a championship. Uh, I do want Tony to uh, be ready to go uh, in in case uh, uh, that Dak should uh, have an issue health-wise. And uh, that gives us strength going into the playoffs. So uh, uh, not from the standpoint of uh, uh, necessarily protecting Dak, but from the standpoint of having Tony are the readiest to come in and uh, play. Max, yep. Dak, number one in Pro Bowl voting, um, best QBR in the league. Do you have a problem with him still talking about Tony Romo? I actually do. And this is something I predicted was going to happen. I think they've handled it very well until now. And I predicted this was going to happen weeks ago. You know, in fact, if not in, in theory, that they're, if they have a big enough lead, Tony Romo gets some snaps. Why not? You rest some guys, you give your backup quarterback some snaps, you get him ready. But there's a bigger thing going on here, I think, if you listen to the way Jerry Jones phrases it. He wants Tony Romo, Tony Romo, to contribute to a championship. Now, I understand, guys, and, and you know better than anyone sitting here, a rookie quarterback doesn't win the Super Bowl. Never happened, right? right. Ain't going to happen. No, but eventually it's going to happen. And when you look at Dak Prescott and this Cowboys team, this looks like a pretty good candidate for it happening. And Dak hasn't missed a game. He's been healthy, and he's leading, and he has the best QBR in the league and the best offensive line. So, yeah, they have a big lead in the division, and the Giants lost JPP just now, by the way, for the season. So it oh, looks like they'll have games up. to rest certain guys and to, and to get Tony Romo some snaps. But if you're the Dallas Cowboys right now, maybe it's better to – not have Dak kind of question his confidence or faith in the organization in any way. Maybe what outweighs getting Tony Romo ready in case is keeping Dak where he is, which right now is on top of the world. And there's good reason to believe they can win it all right now with Dak Prescott. I think that issue, optimizing that, takes precedent over everything else. Well, I know for for me, I'm getting tired of hearing I'm getting tired of hearing Jerry Jones putting Tony Romo, Tony Romo front and center. Center. That's my whole problem with this whole thing. Mm-hmm. You're on a roll. You have, what, a, a 10, 10, 10, 11 game winning streak yep. going on. This should be all about the team. I understand the premise of where he's coming from as far as getting Tony Romo back integrated into the offense. He Remember, he hasn't played in over a year. So just in case Dak, something were to happen to Dak, Dak Prescott, it would be nice to have Tony Romo take some snaps. Now, the only way that will happen is when the Cowboys lock things up and get a first-round bye. Then that's when you treat this whole thing like a third preseason game where you game plan, start to go out there, and then you start subbing guys you know, at some point in the game, probably somewhere around the Philadelphia Eagles because that's the last game of the regular season. But – I'm just, I, don't, I just don't like the whole mindset of you're, all, you're speaking on one player, you know? One player, Tony Romo, Tony Romo. I mean, the, team, the team, the team has, got, has performed thus far, to, you know, to this point thus far. The team is 11-1. and one. Why does everything have to be about, well, we, you know, Tony Romo, we want to win it for Tony Romo? No, too many people are vested in this whole season for you to keep pointing out one guy all the time. Well, I mean, he is one of the top three quarterbacks in franchise history. He does own NFL and franchise records. He might be a guy that deserves a little bit of attention here and there, but it seems to me you two guys basically agree with Jerry Jones' premise, that it would be smart at some point to get Tony Romo some game action. He hasn't played a full, what, like a year, he hasn't played at all game action in two years till he's really put in some serious time. So if he's your backup, and make no mistake, the best backup in the NFL, If he's your backup, it might be good to get him a little game action should something happen to Dak, should he have to step in in the playoffs. Both of you seem to agree with that premise that it's wise to get Tony Romo integrated in. But your problem, as far as I'm hearing you, is that Jerry Jones is talking about it, that he's talking about Tony Romo, that he might, and according to you, Max, what I think I'm hearing you say is Dean Dak's, what, confidence that the organization might be undercutting Dak See, that's the flaw in your logic. Everything you said was right until you got to that great leap. Everything you said was right until you said anything after everything I said was right. But go ahead. 
Well, then we found our divide. Let's hone in on that. It's that you think the words of Jerry Jones can somehow undercut the confidence of Dak Prescott. And there's been absolutely zero evidence. Max, you may harken back and you may get Damien to back you up here that this is the way it works in professional sports and confidence is a fragile thing. We've only ever seen one quarterback start at a time. You may do all that, but you don't know anything about Dak Prescott. You don't know about his confidence. You don't know about the chemistry in that team. You don't know about his relationship with Jerry Jones. Furthermore, In fact, and the evidence would all suggest that this team has unprecedented chemistry. They're going out, socializing together. They're supporting each other. Tony Romo and Dak Prescott individually seem to have a great relationship. I don't see anything that suggests Dak Prescott is questioning himself in the context of this organization. Jerry Jones was asked a direct question about Tony Romo. And had he answered it differently, I wouldn't have a problem with what you're saying nor with what he said. But the, the, if you listen carefully to what he said, he's interested. And this is what I think people are, are honing in on. He's interested in Tony Romo contributing to this championship. Not that Tony Romo got this organization to a certain place or Tony Romo is the best backup quarterback in football, which obviously he is right now. Second best quarterback on the team at the moment, but the best backup. Second in, best in the NFC. But, but, well. <laughs> Touche, but that's wrong. But the point is, he didn't say any of that stuff. He said he's interested in having Tony Romo contribute to the championship, the eventual hopeful championship, not let's keep him sharp in case. And that speaks to a kind of um, obsession of Jerry Jones with having Tony, with not simply winning a championship, but winning it with that guy. Yeah, he, well, doesn't, he, doesn't, up on he doesn't want them to win a ring and then have Tony be able to say, people say, oh, Tony Romo, yeah, he was on that team, but he didn't do anything. So he wants him to have a little piece of it, so he's a part of it, he's earning but the ring know, but, as well. But my, my whole thing is people, people bring something to the table in different ways. It might not be Tony Romo playing and winning games. You could do things behind the scenes, in the meeting room, helping yep. Dak Prescott prepare for these games. There are certainly more ways to help contribute you know to a win. public will knock it. No, a lot of this, the, all this wasn't ha- out there. No, all of this has to do stuff. with Jerry Jones and Tony Romo relationship. It, yeah. that, and I think as a player, the thing that I hated as a player is when a quarterback is viewed above everyone else. And that's the problem I have with Jerry Jones is you keep propping this man up. And I think what's unique about the Cowboys is when I think of the Cowboys, I think of Dak Prescott is just one of the guys. He's just one of the guys, and they and everyone, they just have this unique chemistry. But every time Jerry Jones speaks, it's like he just keeps propping up He's Tony Romo above yeah, the and team. The other thing is, the other thing is, for just generally speaking, I like Tony Romo. I have a high opinion of him. But you are kind of lionizing him out of proportion to his actual accomplishments. No, I'm not. He has never been Aaron Rodgers or Tom Brady or Peyton Manning. He's never been on that level. None of which have arguments nor, I've made. Nor has he ever won multiple Super Bowls or even a Super Bowl like Eli Manning or even a guy like Joe Flacco. He hasn't done any of those things. He's rarely won a playoff game, too, in his but career. Just to be clear. And you're treating Max. him as though he is in a separate category no, no, than Max. the one he's you're actually walking through, in. You're walking through a field of straw men with a torch. I I never said that I never said he was Tom Brady or Aaron Rodgers that he won Super Bowls. I said other things like he holds NFL records, he holds franchise records, he's the third best quarterback in franchise history. Those are things Fourth I said now. that stand unrebutted. By the way, just to be clear, I don't think Jerry Jones is saying, let's get Tony Romo a few snaps in week 17 so he can contribute to this championship. I don't think he thinks a few, maybe even a half in week 16 is really what he's talking about. I think he's talking about having him ready should something happen in the playoffs, and that would be the contribution that matters. Yeah, I agree. And he's, he's he, he sowing wants, those he seeds that something be, will happen He wants him to be a part of that chip. But let's keep the combo going with Jerry and your team, Will, America's team. Jerry, how do you feel about resting players down the stretch? No, I, I see us uh, more as business as usual. Uh, what uh, it does allow you to do is uh, when you've got guys on the fence with injury, uh, not push them. Uh, but uh, the other part of that is the obvious. Uh, you don't want to take the edge off. Uh, a football game is uh, uh, a, p- a part of a, of a uh, personality of the team, uh, and you want that, that you want that team to stay uh, very physical as, as you enter these playoffs. Max? I mean, the issue in football is usually the team that starts is not the team that finishes. They change over time, due oftentimes to injury, but also chemistry, development of younger players, the older players, you know, holding on through the attrition of the season and all of this. 
The Cowboys, though, have seemed to escape that this year. They've been the best team pretty much wire to wire, pretty much, not literally, but almost. And so I would say, while you have to balance the idea that some guys probably need rest and you want to do the right thing there, I think back to the Giants in 07. This is a Super Bowl talk, so I know <laughs> it's been a while for you. But, but it's been Gi- more often, but Gi- it's been a while. Giants in 07 had a, had a playoff spot sewn up. They were going to be the wild card. And the Patriots had an undefeated season going. They were the greatest team of all time in any American team sport, according to just about everybody. And Tom Coughlin said, I'm playing all these guys. I was like, you're crazy. Rest them, including me. I'm on New York radio going, what are you kidding? Rest the guys. He goes, nope, we got to ride this into the playoffs. And they lost a close game to the Patriots and then went through the playoffs on the road, beating teams like Brett Favre at Green Bay and then beat the Patriots in the Super Bowl. And most people who follow that season point to that last game of the season. Now, the Cowboys boys aren't a wild card team they don't need to catch lightning in a bottle they got it already but i would suggest be very careful about how they handle the end of this season i would say just keep doing what you've been doing it's been working the whole time yeah and here's the here's the main here's the biggest difference is the cowboys if they continue on the street they'll have a bye week they have a bye week so Mm -hmm. what's the point in resting your players if you're already gonna have a built-in bye week where you're not playing in the wild card round as you said, Max, the Cowboys have they have chemistry. They have, you know, they're pretty healthy. You always gotta have a little luck. Why why mess any of that up by oh well let's hold back you know let's hold back guys and and disrupt all that chemistry. I go back to the Green Bay Packers in 2011. They won 50. They were 15 and one. The last game of the year they played the Detroit Lions. They subbed out you know subbed out a lot of guys. Came back in the divisional round and lost to who? Your New York football giants in the, in the, in the uh, divisional round. So when it comes to. They you won know, the Super Bowl that year, too, by the way, Will. That's a different I'm, I'm, Giants Super Bowl. Am I, hurt, am I hurting well, you right now? Well, no, do we need to count them up? If we're going to play this game, we can count them up. <laughs> in the last 20 years, go ahead. Let's just count them up. No, but so for me, I'm absolutely not. I'm totally opposed to, you know, sitting your guys and, and, and so on and so forth. Momentum is key when it comes to the postseason. Get in hot so you can ride it out. I defer, I really do defer to the guy with the championship ring on. I know, I do. It looks nice. Um, I believe in momentum. The data analyst guy over here probably thinks it's a a myth, (laughs) a creation of small minds like ours. But I believe in momentum. When you got something good, you keep it going. That being said, it seems like there are certain positions where the risk of injury is higher, where you could rest. I'm specifically talking about Ezekiel Elliott. Alfred Morris is a quality running back. He's nowhere on the level of Ezekiel Elliott. But as the season progresses, I'm not talking about sitting out entire games, but maybe another series or two per game where you're resting his legs. He's never played this many games for his entire career. He's fresh out of college playing 10, 12 games a year. Now he's looking at 16 plus of playoffs. It would seem to me, and this is where I'm actually disagreeing with Jerry Jones, there are players at positions where it might be advantageous as the, as the season winds down towards the very end, where a couple extra series of game of rest would not only give Ezekiel Elliott fresher legs, it would give Alfred Morris, much like the Tony Romo conversation we just had, a little more warm-up going into the playoffs. Should he be called on, some, should something bad happen? Is that not something you think could be advantageous? It could, but listen, you're talking about a rookie running back here. You should, he should have fresh legs for the next few years. I don't. I, it, to me, that makes makes absolutely no and sense. They're not, and they're not it, touching him. It, they're it, not touching I mean, the it, he's he's getting he's getting through the line. He's not even getting contact for like three yards past the line of scrimmage. I mean, listen, he's the thing about Ezekiel Elliott. He's had a lot of touches, but he's had nowhere near like the all time amount of touches that running backs um, have had in the National and, Football League. He, he's he's young. He can he can withstand this. There's no rookie wall. Uh, when it when it, the only time the rookie wall comes about is when teams are losing. Then it's not only rookies, but it's veterans as well that start laying it down. So, Rod and Zeke Elliott out. Keep doing what you're doing. Look, the sample size is data analyst guy. The sample sizes are tiny in football. Tiny. That's why people don't. Anyone who tells you that they're sure about something in the NFL as though it's the NBA or Major League Baseball are lying to you. There's just there aren't enough events that have occurred that you can really say for sure that's what happened. I list, make, you know, talk about the Giants in 07, you talk about the Packers in 11, um, both Giants Super Bowl years, by the way, and, and where one team doesn't rest their guys and goes on to success, another team does rest their guys and it hurts them. 
it doesn't mean that every time that it's perfectly reasonable to say, look, Dallas can rest a few guys. They still might win the Super Bowl. But when you look at examples, boy, it sure seems to me that when you got something good in the NFL, particularly late in the year, look, what was the fear of Dallas fans? Were I a Dallas fan most of this year? I'd be like, just don't let this be the peak. You know, let us peak at the right time. You got to ride this. Troy Aikman, Hall of Fame quarterback, won three Super Bowls, by the way, with the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> uh, he used to say, you don't just flip a switch at the end of the season. You don't go from a three-game losing streak, limping into the playoffs, and start playing well. You don't flip switches. So I agree with you, ultimately. You don't want to see a team shut down to a cold start right before you go in the playoffs. By the way, it's not just football. Sports where there's greater sample sizes, like basketball. We've seen the same thing, that you sit guys to three games going into your first series, and then you to perform in the first series. So I'm with you. I don't want to see a team drive it down into first gear before you got to be in fifth gear in the playoffs. I just think there are a couple positions where you don't sit the entire game. You don't sit even a half. But maybe instead of taking two series off a game, you take three, four. And those positions, like Ezekiel Elliott's, could benefit come playoff time. Not just from a more ready backup, but from more fresh Fresh legs, you know. Fair enough, answer. but first we have the Giants on Sunday Night Football with no JPP, not looking good, Max, but that's another story. Mm. We'll get into that later. And 10 Dallas. days rest for Dallas. Right? So unfair. Thank you, guys.